This is a good subject for lockdown, I think. How does driving affect the environment? Well, according to some research from the European Parliament, some 30% of EU uh, CO2 comes from transport, of which 72% is from road transport, 61% of that is from cars. So in total, 13% of total emissions in the EU come from cars alone, and that's quite a lot. So what can we do about this? Well, some of the solutions now are probably a little bit more palatable than we've thought about in the past. So, for example, driving less uh, is something we've all seen over the last year, is something we can do. Um, we've not been able to go out and, and travel and, and meet people in the normal way, so we've used video conferencing like uh, Zoom or Google Meet or, or Microsoft Teams, others obviously are available, to keep us in touch with people, but also to arrange face-to-face -face meetings. We can still use the telephone. The good old fashioned telephone has been keeping us in touch with people for a hundred years or more. Um, and that's still a very valid way of, of, of communicating with people and avoiding actually physically traveling in a car or in transport to go and meet them. And social media, although sometimes it gets a bad press in some ways, um, actually it's a really good way of keeping in touch. And for, from, from the perspective of providing news to people, sending videos or, or, or just sharing anything with people, social media is really, really helpful. We can actually invest in more efficient vehicles. So, so newer vehicles, for example, tend to be more efficient than older ones. They use less fuel, um, they get more miles per gallon and they pollute the atmosphere a lot less. Um, so that's certainly worth considering. But, but actually, why not go the whole hog? as I have, um, and, and get yourself an electric vehicle or maybe a, a hybrid, or maybe even go uh, to something a bit more modern than that and go for a hydrogen vehicle. There aren't many around, but um, I know the Japanese manufacturers are experimenting with those right now. The cost of those are coming down, which is, which is really helping. Their grants are available for uh, not just for, for in buying the car in the first place, but also for putting charging uh, infrastructure in at home or in the office. Uh, check the, the uh, charging source though before you do that. Make sure you're able to, to, uh, to charge up with, with clean electricity, maybe with some solar panels um, at home or at work or, or with at least a, 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 a tariff from your electricity supply which is clean and from renewable sources to make certain that when you're driving your, uh, your uh, low emissions car it's actually not getting uh, emissions at the back end uh, from, uh, from your electricity source. And also uh, check the range on, on your vehicle um, and check that to, against your driving uh, style and also against how many miles you drive in a, in, in a day. So, so if you're consistently doing more than 300 miles in a day, maybe that doesn't work. But um, how many times do we really genuinely drive more than that two or 300 miles a day? And most, most, most of the, 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 um, the EVs these days will do 250 sometimes 400 miles or more on a single charge which really equates to a full tank on, a, on an electrical diesel vehicle or pretty much so there you go there's some thoughts and some tips on maybe how we can uh, avoid polluting the atmosphere with uh, with road transport driving a bit less investing as i have in the electric vehicle revolution um, and i hope that helps